Hey everyone, I just wanted to share my keyboard journey over the last year going from this keyboard to this keyboard. This video is just to inform, I'm not trying to sell you anything, and I'll try to keep things at a beginner level and explain as I go. Let's start with this keyboard. This is the Microsoft Ergonomic Keyboard, and let's take a look at some of the properties of it. This is the cheapest keyboard that you'll see in this video at $40. It is ergonomic, which means it's designed for your hands instead of just being a bunch of keys laid out in a rectangle like you see on many keyboards. And it has staggered columns, which means that as you go down these columns, you'll see that they zigzag as opposed to ortholinear, which we'll see later in the video. The keycaps are included with this keyboard. They are ABS plastic. That means that they're shiny and that the legends wore off of these pretty quickly, which is why I prefer the other kind of plastic you'll see in this video, which is PBT. The switches underneath each of these keys is rubber dome or rubber membrane. It is not mechanical. And the LEDs are just for status, like pressing caps lock or num lock. You'll see a light underneath those. It's kind of split in that you have this hard plastic in between the two halves of the keyboard, but it's not like you could separate this or split this apart. And it's a full-size keyboard, the benefit being that you have a dedicated key for everything. Arrows, numpad, function keys. You've even got the home and end cluster over here and media keys up at the top. And then the only other extra I didn't talk about yet is the attached wrist rest. This is all one just solid block, as I kind of mentioned. So you can't detach that wrist rest. This list gives us comparison points for all the hardware that you'll see in this video, but I'll cover the later ones a little bit faster than this. Let's see what typing is like on this. That's comfortable for English words, but there are a couple of downsides. First, let's consider using a keyboard shortcut to make a bulleted list in Google Docs. So I move my left pinky and left ring finger to control and shift, and I press A with my right hand. But already we see an awkward hand position here. This could cause some people strain, but even if it doesn't, it requires you to reset your hand position in order to get back to normal typing. That could lead to typos or slower typing speeds. If I want to delete text that I wrote, I have to do something similar with my right hand. I rotate in order to get to the up arrow, I press end and then shift home and then delete. And we can see I rotated my right hand, I had to move it, I had to reset afterward. Similarly, if I want to use my mouse, I have to move my hand about a foot off of the keyboard to reach the mouse and then scroll or click somewhere and get back to the keyboard. If you don't have hand or wrist pain, then those downsides aren't the end of the world. You'll navigate the keyboard, you'll get used to it so that resetting your hand position isn't too bad. But still keep all that in mind for later in this video when I show you a wild new way of typing. I got done with the Microsoft Ergonomic Keyboard and I wanted to try something mechanical. There was a lot of hype around this keyboard, the GMMK Pro 75. So I wanted to try this out. Let's look at its properties. First bullet point last time was cost. How much do you think this is? Last one was 40 bucks. This one for just the base is $130 more. It doesn't come with keycaps or switches. So the total cost was 200 more than the last keyboard. These can get pretty expensive. It is not ergonomic and you really feel that coming from the Microsoft ergonomic keyboard where your hands are very close together. You might get some strain just from that. It still has staggered keys though. The LEDs are per key. So each individual key can light up and then the sides of the keyboard can also light up. It is not split. It doesn't even have any plastic in between the two halves of the keys. And it's a 75% keyboard, which means you start sacrificing some of the keys. We obviously don't have a numpad over here, but we only really have four extra keys, if you want to call them that. We do still have dedicated function keys, number keys. And then the extra thing on here that I want to point out is this encoder. I had this set up for volume, and then if I pressed it in, it was pause play. I thought that was great. I really like that. And what does this keyboard feel like? This was a huge leap in my keyboard journey solely because of the firmware that's compatible with this keyboard called QMK or quantum mechanical keyboard. In short, what this lets you do is control any aspect of the hardware from lighting up LEDs in certain ways to using any of these features that you see on the left side here of this webpage. The one I want to highlight is called layers. And this is something that you're familiar with. If you look down at your keyboard right now, you don't see dedicated keys for exclamation mark or dollar sign or even capital W. You have to press shift which puts you into another layer and then lets you access those keys that I mentioned. That's something very standard about keyboards. You can use that to make custom layers. To show this, I turn off the lights in my room so that it's obvious when the layers change. This is something that I like using the LEDs for to try to make them a little bit more functional than just pretty colors. When I press a key on my keyboard, it turns green and we see that these keys in the middle 
are now number keys. That's really convenient. And I took that a step further and made it so that semicolon, when you just tap it, still types out a semicolon, but when you hold it, it changes you into a navigation layer. Now I have access to arrow keys, home, end, backspace, enter, tab, whatever I need is now on that key without me having to contort my hand like I did earlier. One of the things that I realized using both of those keyboards is that I didn't use my right thumb for anything. You have 10 fingers if you count your thumbs and to not use 10% of that just seemed like a waste to me. That's what led to me getting this keyboard, which is the Moonlander. Let's look at the properties of this. This is the most expensive keyboard in this video at $365. It is also the first ortholinear one that I'm highlighting here. That means that the columns are not staggered at all. It takes a little bit to get used to typing for some people on an ortholinear keyboard, but it feels nice. It's pretty natural. The next thing I want to highlight here is that this is a fully split keyboard. I'm holding just one of the halves right now. That means that you can put it as far apart or as close together as you want on your desk to accommodate your shoulder resting position, your arms, and also what that means is that if it's far enough apart, you could actually put your mouse in between the two halves of the keyboard. At only 72 keys, it means that you're going to give up a dedicated function row. You have enough extra keys where you could put them on the sides, let's say, or you could make layers for them. But again, you just don't have that dedicated function row. It's something more you'll have to remember when it comes to using it. And then as far as extras, there's one thing I wanted to point out here, which is that there is a wrist rest that you can fold out from the back, and then it just magnetizes to the back of the keyboard here. Let's see how this one feels to type. The Moonlander is good and I had fun using it, but it amplified one of the problems that I had earlier, which is that I had to rotate my hand to use the modifier keys like Control and Shift. There's a sort of easy solution you can do, which is to put them on the thumb keys here, but I learned, and I did not make this myself, about a radical new way of using modifier keys called home row modifiers. Let's break down what that means. The home row is where your hands naturally rest. So ASDF on the left hand and JKL semicolon on the right hand. And modifiers are keys like shift, control, alt. Together, home row mods is putting those modifier keys right where your hands are naturally. So if I wanna type an exclamation mark, I can hold down my right pointer finger exactly where it was and then just press one to type an exclamation mark. This completely changed how I use my keyboard. There are two major benefits. For one, you do not need an extra four keys on the edge of your keyboard for modifiers because they'll be right underneath your fingers now. And the second is you hardly have to move your hands to do anything. Remember that shortcut from earlier in the video, Control Shift 8? Well, let's see what that looks like using home row mods. So first, I'm gonna press the number layer on my keyboard and all these turn green like earlier. So now I can press an eight if I want to. And then to use Control and Shift, my fingers are already there. So I just press two of them down and then press eight and I've made a bulleted list and hardly had to move my hands. There are some downsides to home row mods. For one, it's much harder to switch between two keyboards if one has home row mods and one doesn't because you'll just treat all of the keyboards like they have it. And then you'll make lots of typos and you'll need to retrain your muscle memory. The second thing is that it slows you down. Remember that when you tap one of those keys, so for example, when I tap J, it should still type out a J, but when you hold it down is when it finally starts to act as shift. So you need to get used to that exact timing and sometimes you find yourself holding it for longer than you need to just to make sure that you've held it down, which is what slows you down as you type. Now there are lots of options you can use to address this. I don't wanna go into them here. The short story is that it's gonna slow you down a little bit. Finally, and this is huge, there is a tremendous learning curve behind this. It will kill your productivity for at least a week your words per minute will drop down to next to nothing. If you're trying to code, you're gonna to have to retrain all of the shapes you make with your hand. So for example, you get used to control shift being this kind of claw, but now you need to make this kind of claw when you're using home row mods. So there is a learning curve there. Despite the downsides, you learn home row mods, you learn layers, and then you find, I'm only actually using about half the keys on my keyboard anyway. Why not just get a keyboard that only has half the keys? And that's what led to me using the corn. The Korn's hardware is open source, which means you can go to GitHub, you can download a file, send it to a manufacturer, and then get a set of PCBs in a week or two. Because of that, it's kind of hard to talk about cost or any sort of standardization because you'll be building all of this yourself or hiring a build service or someone to do it for you at double or triple the cost. With that said, the cost of mine in total was about $170. 
but I have enough extra parts now where if I had to make a second or a third keyboard, that marginal cost would drop as I go. So it's not like every keyboard is gonna cost 170, but it's kind of hard to ballpark what it would be for you. It is ergonomic, ortholinear. It's pretty much just a smaller Moonlander in that regard. Keycaps and switches, of course, you can put kind of whatever you want on it. What I did is I built a low profile version. So this is very thin. It is about the height of laptop keys, I would say. So it's smaller than your normal keyboard. LEDs, it has per key lighting. And on the underside, it has six underglow LEDs. That's pretty cool. It's a split keyboard. And then 36 keys means if you consider a QWERTY keyboard, you can fit QWERT on here. And then the other couple layers of letter keys, and that leaves the thumb keys for modifiers, switching in other layers, maybe some dedicated keys like space or backspace. And then the extra is you can put an OLED screen on the front of the microcontroller if you want to. I don't really see a point, so I didn't do that, but that's always an option. I wanted something very specific out of my corn. I wanted the five columns. I wanted the low profile switches, but then I hadn't soldered anything in the last 15 years. So I wanted to be easy to solder as well. Unfortunately, you can't get all three of those properties at once, but there was something that was close. It was a six column corn that met the other two properties. So I spent a bunch of hours learning a program called KiCad and some of the properties behind this. And I essentially chopped off that sixth column. Then I sent this to a manufacturer and they produced their minimum batch of five sets of these PCBs. And then I had to solder it all. I watched a bunch of videos on how to solder, but I was still surprised because none of them seem to tell you how tiny some of these components are that you have to solder. I've dropped this twice now trying to record this. So this is the best camera angle you're gonna get. This is a diode and you need to solder one of these for each of the keys that you do on this keyboard. The contacts are very tiny. You need to use tweezers to put it into place. I really wished I had a magnifying glass as I was doing this, but I got it all together and I'll show you how the keyboard types. Something I wanted to see when I was considering the corn is a real world typing example to show how little your hands are moving. So I've dimmed the lights here to show off the LEDs. Now I want to type LEDs, but in order to do that with home row mods, I have to type shift with my left hand first for L and then with my right hand for the rest. This is where caps lock really comes in handy, which I never thought I'd be saying, but I can press U, I, and O. It's a combo that I have that'll turn on caps lock, or I could use a dedicated key in my function layer here and I could type LED, then exit caps lock. And there we go. I can use a keyboard shortcut, control K M to turn this into JavaScript, let's say, control slash to make it a comment. Now when I'm typing out a, a function here, I want to use parentheses, so I have a symbol layer, and then I want curly braces, and I can use that exact same key I use for parentheses and just hold shift because of custom code I wrote for QMK. I can use my navigation to go between these. I could write out some variables, tab here, return X plus Y, and type a semicolon. I could copy this whole function if I want, duplicate it, delete some of these things, or even use the mouse in order to select lines like this. Now, this is not something I would do while coding, but it shows that you can control the mouse through the keyboard. And all of that involved very little hand movement. I have some closing thoughts. For one, if you have any pain whatsoever as you're using a keyboard and you use it for more than, let's say, an hour a day, which probably is a lot of you if you made it to this part of the video, you should really take an ergonomic assessment of your hardware, your keyboard layout, and see if there's anything you can change, try some different things out. To that end, I found that if you have a keyboard that is customizable, either because it's got QMK or just has got some software that lets you change things, it can be helpful to see what your next keyboard might be like. This is kind of what I did with the Moonlander, where I saw what if I had the same keys that a corn would have, and then I popped off all the other keys from the keyboard. I got that idea from another YouTuber named Ben Balak. The learning curve is steep on a lot of this. You're talking about something that you've probably been doing for years in a certain way for years, and now you're going to turn it upside down and try something possibly wildly different. It'll take time, and you won't know that any of it is actually effective until you've tried it for at least a week. This is something that's a little bit frustrating about changing layouts. Even something like home row mods, when your words per minute go down to 10% of what they used to be, you can't tell if it's eventually going to rise to 80% and cap out there or 150%. You have to give it some time. And finally, there are some links that I put in the description. I've open sourced the hardware. I've open sourced my keyboard layout 
If you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to reach out to me. I've also included a Discord link. You can just DM me if you want to. As far as this video goes, don't like, don't subscribe. I don't care. I just wanted you to enjoy the video. So thank you for watching. Thank you for making it this far.